Why do you care so much? I'm a taxpayer of Wayne County, and he has hurt many union employees within Wayne County, and they deserve justice in this matter. Troublemaker, a lone wolf trying to embarrass local politicians, but others say he's an unsung hero, a giant killer, a man who fights for the rights and the money of local taxpayers. His name is Robert Davis. It's the holidays right now. A lot of people on vacation, so we're doing a kind of a mini Let It Rip tonight. No big panel, just one guest. Maybe somebody you've never heard of, but you should hear of. Robert Davis joins us live right now. Robert, thank you. Well, thank you, Mr. Perkins. I'm, I'm kind of unfortunate. Isn't, we're everyone else. <laughs> well, don't call me Mr. Perkins. Call me Huel. You know, some people think you're a hero, but some politicians say you're a nuisance. So who are you really? Who is Robert Davis? How do you make a living? Why are you doing this? Well, very simply, Mr. Perkins, is the fact that I'm, I'm very fortunate to have the position of working for the greatest union in the state of Michigan, Ask Me Council 25, that represents thousands of hardworking public sector workers across the state of Michigan, including here in the great county of Wayne. And you know what? When one of the things in which I value the most is seeing the great workers of Wayne County and the union members have asked me, working hard every day, working for the taxpayers of Wayne County. Well, right now you are a key player in the Wayne County severance scandal. The judge recently ruled that the airport authority broke the law when they hired Takiyah Mullen in secret. Now, he made that ruling after you filed a lawsuit. Yes, sir. I mean, this particular lawsuit is very simple and straightforward. When you look at the facts of the case, uh, the Airport Authority Board clearly violated the Open Meetings Act, in which they met in secret and closed sessions to interview the six finalists. And as the evidence in which my great attorneys, Andrew Patterson, put forth, clearly showed that there, there was an agenda at place. And this agenda was to hire Ms. Mullen as the CEO of the airport. Unfortunately, the taxpayers of Wayne County, the citizens of Wayne County, was denied the opportunity to grill each and every member of the Airport Authority Board to say, why is it that you decided to select Ms. Mullen as the candidate for the CEO position and as compared to other qualified, highly qualified candidates across the country? Now, her lawyer, though, says uh, that if the airport board broke the law by hiring her in secret, that doesn't mean that they could fire her in secret. And he says that the airport may still owe her more than $700,000 in severance. What do you think about that? Well, I, I think his, his, his argument is quite misplaced. When you look at the total circumstances of this particular lawsuit, they met in closed session based upon the written opinion of the airport authority board's uh, legal counsel. That is a legal right in which the Airport Authority Board has the right to do. Their $700,000 severance is totally illegal, which is the substance of our instant lawsuit before the Honorable Judge Colombo before the Wayne County Circuit Court. And it's illegal twofold. It's illegal because Ms. Mullen illegally negotiated behind closed doors with one individual of the Airport Authority Board, and that's Ms. Sue Hall, which is illegal pursuant to the Airport Authority Act. In addition to that, the severance agreement was never approved by the full board of the airport authority. And so what many people are failing to realize is the fact that it needed to be approved by the full board in order to be legally inactive. Well, you are also uh, in another lawsuit as well. You mm -hmm. filed suit to remove Roy Roberts as emergency manager of Detroit Public Schools because he didn't take the oath when he took the job. Absolutely. He did take the oath later, so why sue now? Well, it, the Constitution is the basic fabric in which we all live by. And the Constitution is very clear in which it states that before any public official can assume the duties of the office in which they are appointed or elected to, they have to take and subscribe to said oath. He failed to do so. He didn't take the oath of office until my lawsuit and my inquiry was filed with the Honorable State Attorney General Bill Schuette some three months later. So, but for my lawsuit and my inquiry with the Honorable uh, Michigan Attorney General Bill Schuette, he would have never taken the oath of office. And I applaud the great jurist justices of the Michigan Supreme Court who are truly standing firm by the clear wording of the Michigan Constitution in which they say, we're going to hear this case and decide whether or not he can lawfully hold the position in which he was appointed to by Governor Snyder. You had another run-in with an emergency manager, Art Blackwell, Highland Park. Before Indeed. reporters, before police, you uncovered the evidence that Blackwell had paid himself more than $200,000 when he claimed to be making only a buck. He was charged Absolutely. with embezzlement, but the charges were thrown out. Does that mean that you were wrong? 
Oh, absolutely not. And when you say they were thrown out, I, I, I applaud uh, Wayne County Prosecutor Kim Worthy, who uh, uh, appealed this decision by a Wayne County Circuit Court judge who had a clear, a clear, clear, clear uh, violation of the law in front of her. But based upon her flawed uh, interpretation of the law and based upon her personal uh, relationships with Mr. Blackwell, she violated the law. This is one of the judges that have been overturned more so than any other judge in Wayne County Circuit Court. I'm very confident that the Michigan Court of Appeals will reinstate the charges against Mr. Blackwell. And in fact, in the coming weeks, I believe that he will be facing additional charges as well. Well, let me also mention, too, that uh, although you have led the FBI in terms of several investigations, the FBI also, also raided your house a few Indeed. months ago. What was that about? Well, one of the things in which I, I say is that as my bishop, Bishop Charles H. Ellis III of Greater to Grace Temple, always says and preaches to us every Sunday is that without a test, you truly don't have a testimony. And the test in which I've gone through in that particular ordeal, I am very fortunate because I truly have a testimony which has led me on this fight that that particular situation is not going to derail me for fighting for the citizens of Wayne County and the hardworking men and women of the ASME Union throughout this Just to be sure, though, but you are not charged with anything? You're not under investigation by the FBI right now? No, I am not. No, I'm not. Do you plan to run for office? Do you plan to run for Senate Congress or Governor? Absolutely not. I, I, I love the position in which I hold working every single day for those who put their blood, sweat, and tears on the line for this city, for this county, for this state. And I just left a particular engagement in which people were talking about the 20 percent in which this county illegally took from them. All right. This is a cheerful season, and they're concerned about the rate of pay in which they were unlawfully taken from them by this particular county executive, and we're going to fight. We're going to be on the front line, Hugh, and I, I expect uh, Fox 2 and you to be there with us well, Robert fighting Davis, for the people. I know you will be on the front lines, and I know that you will make another appearance on Let It Rip very soon. We thank you for your time. Well, I thank you for this invitation. God bless. All right. Take care. Robert Davis.